Oops, got cut, bleeding. Oh, thank God, got stopped. So you got an idea, isn't it? Yes, we are going to study hemostatic agents. So hemostatic agents means those which arrest bleeding either by vasoconstriction or it promote coagulation. So let's learn in detail. Classified as local agents which consists of collagen, calcium alginate, fibrin glue, astringents, thrombin, gelatin, oxidized cellulose, adrenaline and tranexamic acid. Finding it difficult to rem memorize? Go for this. Sissy has fat goat. Sissy has fat goat. Write yourself. Moving on to the systemic agents. Desmopressin, ethamsalate, antihemophilic, fibrinogen, epsilon aminocaproic acid, adrenochrome mono, semicarbazone, tranexamic acid and the most common vitamin K. Again finding it difficult? Go for this. Def 8 vitamin K. Def 8 vitamin K. Now let's deal in detail about each one of them. Local hemostatics. Yes, the first one is the astringents. So what do astringents do? They precipitate proteins in the local bleeding sites. And some of the examples are tannic acid, ferric chloride or sulfate, aluminum chloride or aluminum sulfate. Then we have the adrenaline. Yes, it is vasoconstrictor. So if you have a cotton pad soaked in 0.1% of adrenaline solution, then we can apply that on the bleeding site. Okay, thereby we can control the bleeding from that local site. Then we have thrombin. Yes, you all know thrombin converts fibrinogen to fibrin. It means it facilitates the last step in coagulation cascade and thereby promote hemostasis. We have fibrin glue. It contains fibrinogen, factor 8, calcium, another clotting component. Oh my god, all these help for hemostasis. Then the collagen. It also promotes aggregation of platelets, thereby we can form clothes. Oxidized cellulose. You have to use it when it is dry because it swells up and then it forms the cloth. Calcium alginate. It is also an absorbable hemostat. Tranexamic acid, you can use it oral, IV or you can use it topically. Now moving on to the systemic hemostatics. Fibrinogen. Yes, fibrinogen, we know it controls bleeding and mostly associated with hypofibrinogenemia. And this fibrinogen, it is obtained from human plasma. Next, we have anti-hemophilic factor and this, as the name suggests, hemophilic. It means it controls bleeding episodes in hemophilics. Also, it contains the coagulation factor 8 and von Willebrand's factor. Next, we have adrenochrome monosemicarbazone. It mainly controls the bleeding from the capillaries that is the capillary oozing it is the oxidation product of adrenaline then we have the ethamsalate ethamsalate it corrects the abnormal platelet adhesion and also it maintains the stability of capillary walls therefore it can control the bleeding from small vessels next we have the desmopressin Desmopressin, it is actually a synthetic analog of adrenaline. It can control mild to moderate bleeding in hemophilia A 
and also von Willebrand's diseases. Next is the epsilon amino caproic acid. This controls the bleeding where, yes, when there is an overdose of fibrinolytics after tooth extraction or a surgery in hemophilics. Now we move on to the most important systemic hemostat that is yes the vitamin K. Now as you all know vitamin K are the fat soluble vitamin and they exist in three forms. They are vitamin K1 from the plants and animal source and also it has a good name phytonadion and then K2 by intestinal bacteria and stored in hepatic tissues and this is called as menaquinone. Then we have the K3 form that is the synthetic form and it is called as menadion. Okay, so now let's say it's dietary sources. Yes, you can find vitamin K in cabbages, spinaches, tomatoes, cauliflower, butter, milk, meat, pears, liver, etc. Now, do you know the average intake is approximately 70 to 140 microgram per day of vitamin K? Let's see something about the pharmacokinetics. Yes, K1 and K2 require the presence of bile for absorption. Not only that, it is transported along with LDL and it is stored in the liver. Metabolites are excreted in bile and urine. Okay, so let's move on to the actions. We all know they are the major factor for clotting. So it acts as a cofactor for gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid residues of the clotting factor. Now, if you have vitamin K deficiency, what happens? Yes, there is increased tendency to bleed. It can cause epistasis, hematuria, gastrointestinal bleeding and also even post-operative bleeding too. What are its uses then? You can treat bleeding associated diseases. Also, you can prevent the bleeding with vitamin K deficiencies. Then, in obstructive jaundice with hemorrhagic symptoms, you can give parenteral vitamin K1. Also, vitamin K1 is given to all neonates. Why? In order to prevent bleeding. Do you know what is the reason? Because the synthesis of vitamin K is not developed in the neonates. Also, you can use it in salicylate poisoning with hemorrhagic complications and mainly used one is vitamin K1. Not only that, you can also use to control bleeding in oral anticoagulant therapy. Phytonadione is mainly used, that is vitamin K1. What are the adverse effects? Yes. Intravenously, if you give, the adverse effects include flushing, sweating, dyspnea, hypotension, cyanosis, collapse, and even anaphylactic reactions. Intramuscularly, severe pain and bleeding at the site can be happened. Vitamin K3, when given, there can be hemolysis, hyperbilirubinemia, and kernicterus in newborn so it's not commonly used so with this we finish the hemostatic agents hope you all understood don't forget to comment about the topics that you need further and also subscribe to our channel thank you